through 13, Matthew chapter 25, verse number 1 through 13. Amen. And the word says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Our thought for this morning, check your oil. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, you ought to find you a neighbor, look at him and tell them, check your oil. Check your oil. Check your oil. Amen. We, we have been in the habit of using a vehicular vernacular, so we're going to stick with that for this morning. Check your oil. Amen. Please pray with me. I remember when I was 20 years old, and I was still driving my first car. I had a 89 Buick Regal, white beige interior. It was pretty. Amen. And um, I used to take my car over to Watley's Auto. I miss Watley's Auto. Amen. Jimmy was my buddy. He would work with you. And some of y'all wouldn't pay him right, and that's why Watley's Auto ain't open no more. Amen. But at any rate, you know, if we do right, we can keep our businesses open. But anyway, amen. Uh, I used to go to him for all my oil changes. And speaking of not doing right, I waited one time a little too long for that oil change. And I remember I kept looking at that light on my dashboard telling me it was time for that oil change. One day I said, okay, I better go get this oil changed for I'll be messed up with this car. And I went out and I got my car and I started it up. And I, I was living in Coliseum Park Apartments and I backed out of my parking spot and I went to pull out of the parking lot and the engine blew right there. I didn't have enough oil to make it. Sitting there, in the parking lot with a long face because the light had been on. The warning had went out. I had had ample opportunity to check my oil. I'd had ample opportunity to ensure that I had enough oil to keep going. But now I was sitting there with a the long face with a car that was no good because I didn't take care of my oil. 
Some of us have found ourselves sitting in that parking lot of life with the long face, life busted, engine of our relationships blown up. Because even though the warning has gone out, we did fail to check the oil in our lives. Amen. Well, you know, I'm a text preacher, so let's look at what the text has to say about it. If we look at verse number one and two, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Now what you must understand is that in the traditional Jewish wedding, once the bridegroom and the bride had determined that they would be engaged. And their families had sat down to discuss the terms of their engagement and they would settle on their marriage contract, if you will, amen. Then the groom would go away to prepare a place for his bride in his father's house. He would build on to his father's house. He would expand a wing onto his father's house that would be for his own family. He would take care of all of the draperies, all of the furniture that would be necessary, all of the accoutrements that would be needed, amen, for the wife to live and to do her duties in the house. Now, while he's doing that, the bride would prepare herself for the coming of the groom. Because the bride does not know when the groom cometh. But when he has finished preparing the place, then he will come. And so there would be minimal communication between the camp of the groom and the camp of the bride. But eventually, when the time drew near, the camp of the groom would let the word leak out that it's just about time. It's just about the season. It's time for y'all to make sure that you are ready and prepared. And so when that season had come, the bride and all of her bridesmaids, who should be virgins, amen, the bride and all of her bridesmaids, would camp out together, waiting for the groom to come. Now, they don't know if he would come in the middle of the day. They don't know if he will come in the middle of the night. For unlike our modern culture, when we send out invitations to our wedding with a specific time on it, meet us here at the temple at 3.30, there's going to be a wedding. But it didn't work that way in Israel. The bridal party had to be ready for the wedding whenever the groom was ready. Amen, somebody. Amen. Somebody say you had to be ready. Amen. And so, because the wedding could happen over in the middle of the night, they had to have their lamps for light to see their way to where the wedding would take place. And in order for that light in your lamp to be lit and to burn and to light your way, you had to keep some oil. Amen. So here we have the ten virgins of the bridal party who have gathered together, bedded down for the night. Amen. They have five of them were wise and five of them were foolish concerning the oil. There are only two kinds of people in this world. There are wise people and there are fools. You fit into one of those camps. You're either a wise person or you're a fool. Look at your neighbor and say, Mama said, don't be no fool. Amen. 
Psalm 14 and 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. He who believes not in God, according to the Bible, that's a fool. He who believes not in the God of the Bible is also a fool. For all of creation bears witness to the majesty of Jehovah. The heavens and the earth themselves sing out to the glory of their creator. Bear testimony to the intelligent design of the universe. The fact that our galaxy is perfectly ordered with planets that rotate around the sun. They're not held by a string to keep them in their orbit. But God arranged something called gravity that man knew nothing about for thousands of years. He put life on this planet, this planet that he hung in space at a 23.5 degree angle. Just right, because if we were not tilted at the angle we are at, there would be no seasons. And if there was no seasons, there'd be no vegetation. If there was no vegetation, then most of our food is gone. Matter of fact, all of our food is gone. I tell you why, because we eat animals, but the animals eat the vegetation. So by the way of the chain of life, if he didn't hang the planet the way it is, there'd be no life on it. If our planet was any closer to the sun, we'd burn up. If our planet was any further from the sun, we'd freeze. The very world itself testifies to the fact that there was an intelligent designer. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You know why that is? A fool is not a person who doesn't know. If you don't know, you're ignorant. And there's nothing wrong with being ignorant. All of us are ignorant to something. Amen. None of us knows everything. Everybody's ignorant to something. There's nothing wrong with being ignorant. But the fool is a person who does know and chooses to act as if they don't know. For all of us can look around and see the evidence, but some of us have chosen to, to say that there is no God, chosen to live as if there is no God. Well, we found out who the fool is, who's the wise person. Proverbs 9 and 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. What is this fear of the Lord? Does that mean we should be terrified and shaking in our boots? That's not the relationship he intended for us. But what he means by fear is he's called us to have a healthy degree of respect for him. Amen. We should fear him enough to understand that we ought to obey him. For he is the one who can destroy both your body and your soul in hell. I'm 35 years old, I'm married, I have my own daughter, my own place, my own vehicles, my own bills, and my own money to pay them with, but I still have a healthy fear of my father. Not because I think he's going to hurt me anymore, amen, I did have a fear of him that way when I was growing up, amen. But I have a healthy fear of my father in the terms of I respect him because of who he is. I respect him because of what he's done. Amen. And I respect him because the Bible tells me if I do so, then my days will be long on the earth. And I still do what he tells me to do. Even though he makes sure to let everybody know I'm his pastor, but he's still my daddy. Amen, somebody. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can go to any kind of college, any kind of university, anywhere you want to, be it Harvard, Yale, or if you go over the seas to Oxford, amen. You can get every kind of PhD and doctor degree and whatever. But if you do not have the fear of the Lord, you're just an educated fool. So we see we had 10 virgins. Five of them were foolish. Five of them were wise. And the difference in this specific parable is hung upon who had the oil. Prophetically, oil speaks of the anointing. For it was 
the oil that came out of the olives, along with some other specific ingredients that God gave, which produced the anointing oil. That oil that was poured on the head of the priest in order to induct them into the priesthood. That oil that was in the veins, in the fiber, in the bones of the prophets. So much that you can throw a dead man on the prophet's bones and the dead man will get up again. Amen, somebody. It was that oil that was poured out by the prophets on the kings in order to empower them with divine wisdom and authority for kingship, for rulership. And why did they pour oil on prophets, priests, and kings? Because that oil was a representation of the true anointing. It was only a physical symbol of the actual anointing. And the actual anointing is the empowering spirit of God upon a person, amen, to give them the power to live right, to give them the wisdom to walk with God. The anointing is the presence of God on you. Yes. Yes. For that reason, you ought to check your oil. Amen. Do you have the oil in your life? Do you have the presence of God in your home? Is the name of God upon you? Is his grace working on your behalf? Can you see his favor in your life? The popular saying is that favor ain't fair, amen. Well, have you seen God's favor working in your life where he made a way for you where other people were failing? I've seen him working in mine. Have you seen him working in yours? Check your oil. The oil speaks of the anointing. To produce the anointing oil, they would crush the olives over and over. Amen. When we get to the end of this message, somebody might have to go and give Sister Nissa a high five. And if you weren't here on Tuesday, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But in order to get the anointing oil out of the olive, they had to crush the olive over and over. They had to ground the olive over and over. It wasn't a one-time thing. It was a process. Some of us are looking at our lives now saying, I have been crushed. I have been killed. I have been destroyed. I have hit rock bottom just long enough to get my head up again so I can hit rock bottom all over again. I have been through the ringer. My life has been drawn through hell and high water. And I don't understand why it seems like I have been smacked down again and again. Why is that? It's because in order to get the oil out of the olive, it had to go through the process. Somebody said I had to go through it. I had to have the experiences I've had in order to get to a closer place with God. It's called the costly anointing. Amen. There's some people who want to come down to the altar and have the pastor lay hands on you and get that anointing. But I want you to understand, you got to pay for this, baby. You got to go through some things if you want to have the power of the living God. I apologize if somebody told you that once you got filled with the Holy Ghost, you was going to walk through a bed of roses. Because this walk on the highway of holiness is certainly not a tiptoe through the tulip. But it's a rough road. I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. But I'm glad for my every struggle. I'm glad for my every hurt. I'm glad for my every backstabbing. I'm glad for everybody that talked about me. Because all you've done is given fuel to the fire that has refined me. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that I shall come forth ha, as pure gold. Ha. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Ah, it's a process. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Everybody's process isn't the same. Some of us had to come through the sick bed. Some of us have spent more time in the hospital than we spent in our own home. 
some of us have had to come through poverty, amen. <laughs> some of us didn't have two nickels to rub together. <laughs> Wish we had enough ramen to eat for the week, amen. <laughs> Don't have enough hot dogs to make it through, amen. <laughs> Some of us have had to be broken hearted and lonely. <laughs> Do not despise your journey. <laughs> Do not despise the path that God has set for you. <laughs> for your process has been custom made for you. That's why your anointing is not like her anointing. My anointing is not like his anointing. <laughs> All of us have our own flow in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> All of us have our own measure of strength in the Lord. <laughs> All of us have our own calling in God. And if you're going to get all of the oil out of this process, you can't skip the process. You can't skip the process. This is not Mario world. There's no warp zones here. You've got to go down the path that God has set for you. It's the process that brings forth the oil. When I first got saved and I was reading the scripture and I, I couldn't understand how the writer could say that we rejoice in tribulation. How can we rejoice when we're being persecuted. This, this didn't make sense to me until I walked a little further down the road and I found out that you can't really know that God is a healer until he's healed you. You can't really know that God is a provider until you didn't have anything and the Lord made a way out of nowhere. You can't really know he's a miracle working God till you needed a miracle and the Lord showed up. That's why can't nobody tell me that he's not a miracle working God. Can't nobody tell me he doesn't still work healings. Huh? In the moment, huh? I thank God. Can't nobody tell me he won't make a way. Huh? Can't nobody tell me that if I pay my tithes, he won't make sure I have everything I need. Because huh? I've done it and I've seen him make a way. Huh? I've opened up my mailbox and had money in there that I didn't know was coming and I didn't ask for it. Huh? I've had people shake my hand and put cash in my hand. I have a niece that opened up her front door and had bags of grocery on her front step. I've seen them do it. I've been healed in my body. My wife has been healed in her body. The Lord has used me to heal some of your bodies. I know he'll do it. I've seen him do it. Somebody tell me, won't he do it? He's a mighty God. And he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Well, let's look at verse number three. Verse number three says, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. The fool cares not to prepare oil for their lamps. The fool doesn't see what's coming ahead, doesn't understand that time is precious. Too busy with the illusion that is placed in front of them by the devil, which only serves to distract you from the purposes of God. Don't be caught being a foolish person. You're so busy with the money in front of you, you're so busy with the relationships in front of you, you're so busy with your reputation, you're so busy with your career that you forget to keep the oil. Because if you don't have none of that stuff, you've got to have the oil. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have leather interior, uh-huh. You can have a CD player in that car. You can have spinning 24 inch rims on that thing. But if you don't have no oil, you ain't going nowhere. You can have a big house and a pretty car and expensive clothes. You can have all the friends in the world. You can be the most popular person there is. But if you don't have the oil, you ain't going nowhere. Amen, somebody. That's a good place to stop and tell your neighbor, check your oil. Check your oil. 
Uh huh. Verse number four. Verse number four. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. You see, the wise prepare for tomorrow. The wise understand that today is not the end of the matter. So they take measures to ensure that they have enough oil to make it through the darkness of the night. A wise person is a person who's more concerned with their oil, more concerned with their anointing. You need to be more concerned with the presence of God in your life. You need to be more concerned with making sure that you're one of the people that is called by his name. That's more important than anything else. I keep trying to remind, I'm not against having things. I like nice things. I don't mind if the Lord bless me with some nice things. But nice things is not what life is about. Because if I got to be the man under the bridge to make it into the kingdom, I'll be the man under the bridge. Amen, somebody. But I'm going to be the wise man under the bridge. If I got to be a broke man, I'm going to be a broke man with the anointing. If I got to be alone, I'm going to be alone with the power of God. If I got to be friendless, I'm going to be friendless with the word of God in my mouth. Yes, it's time to check your oil. It's time to check your life. It's time to check yourself. It's time to make sure you have your priorities straight. It's time to make sure you spend time in the Word. Because when He shows up, it's too late to know it. It's time to make sure that you have been applying the Word to your life. It's time to make sure you are living in His righteousness. Because when He shows up, it's too late to try to be righteous. It's time to make sure you're sold out to Jesus separate it to God in your heart. It's time to make sure you are holy on the inside because when our holy God shows up, it's too late to get holy. Don't let it be said too late. When he comes, he comes. You don't know the day or the hour, but let me tell you, the word is gone out and the season is near. The reason why the bridesmaids would be virgins is because it represented the purity. We are called to be the pure ones. We are gathered here today, and I hope that we have brought oil for the journey. I hope we've brought oil to make it through the night. Because certainly I know we're in a night season. Every time we turn on the television, we see evidence that we are over in the middle of the night. Oh, the sun might be up in the sky, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about our world is in a night season. We are in a dark time. It's a time that is so dark that most people can't hardly see. Get caught up in the darkness and think that living in the darkness is the only way to live. But no, we were made to be light in the darkness, but your light cannot so shine if you don't have the oil. Check your oil. Verse number five, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. The time when you will most need the oil may not be today, but the wise person will be prepared and be full of oil when it's time to shine. They got their lamps, they got their oil, and they settled in, and the bridegroom didn't show up at that moment. While the bridegroom was waiting, getting prepared in the last moments, they fell asleep. But even the wise virgins, when they slept, they still had their oil. Do you still have your oil when you seem to be asleep? Do you keep your oil over in the middle of the night? Do you have your oil on the weekend? Do you have your oil on Friday night? Some of us leave our oil at home and we go out for that other kind of oil. 
and then we think when we come back on Sunday that the oil we had at home is not going to burn now. You have to understand because you can't mix them. Amen, somebody. Don't go over into the night because our world is in the night. You got to keep your oil. Amen, somebody. It's a lot of different things going on. It's a lot of people compromising on this holiness. There's a lot of people compromising on righteousness. But I want to tell you one thing. The judge is not compromising. He meant what he said, and he said what he meant. Don't think you're going to weasel your way out of it when you stand before the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ. Hell's still smoking. God ain't joking. Verse number six, after we see that the wedding party slumbered and slept, verse number six, and at midnight there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. One day we're going to hear the trumpet sound announcing the coming of the bridegroom. One day, the groomsmen will scream from heaven, behold, the bridegroom cometh. The day is coming when the call will go out. Will we be ready? Can we have a T.D. Jakes moment? Somebody say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because when he shows up, it's too late to get ready. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. The day is coming when he shall part the sky. The day is coming when our God shall arrive. They shall blow the trumpet. We celebrated the day of trumpets. We celebrated the fact that one day we shall be caught up. We had on white garments on that day. Because on that day we shall be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And I'm going up to meet him. And I hope you're going up to meet him too. Whether I be dead or alive. But we shall be caught up. But now, not everybody will be caught up because you got to have the oil or you ain't going nowhere. And you'll be stuck standing on the earth with the long face because you had a Bible and you had a church, but you didn't have any oil. Verse number six again, and at midnight there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, the five foolish and the five wise, those without oil and those with oil. They arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, not so lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. When it's time to use your oil, if you don't have any, it's too late. If you don't have any relationship with God, when Jesus shows up, it's too late to try to get saved now. You can jump in and out the water all you want to. It's too late now. You can hock a massage and I tie my bow tie all you want to. Once he didn't came, it's too late now. You can run around and apologize to everybody you wronged all day long, but once Jesus then already came, it's too late now. Make your apologies now. Make your amends now. Do what's right now. Stop cussing and fussing now. Stop sleeping with people you're not married to now. 
Now is the time to get it right. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to make sure you've got your oil. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. But when the bridegroom comes, it's too late. When it's time to use the word of God, if you haven't learned any, it's too late. When it's time to trust that God will answer your prayers, if you haven't deposited any, it's too late. The Bible says that if God's spirit lives in you, his spirit is what will raise your mortal body from the dead. When it's time to be resurrected back to life eternal and caught up to meet him in the air. If you don't have the true oil, the spirit of the living God, it's too late and the door will be shut. Reminds me of those people in Noah's day. For 120 years, Noah built his ark and they looked at him like, man, you a fool. You building this big old boat in the middle of dry ground. Look at Noah, this old idiot, building a big old boat in the middle of dry ground, talking about water going to fall from the sky. Now you have to text, check your text, you'll find out it had never rained yet. But dew and mist came up from the earth and watered the ground. So Noah talking about, listen y'all, it's going to rain. And they talking about, man, what is rain? Water don't fall from the sky. You failed your science class. Water come up from the ground. What's wrong with you? Some of us look the same. But Noah is good company. We talking about Jesus going to come from the sky and snatch us up. And they looking at us like, man, you a fool. If he was going to come, he would have came already. People don't fly in the sky unless they're in an airplane. They're looking at us the same way. But you see, one day he's going to come. One day the rain comes. And Noah and his family went inside. And the door was shut. Uh-huh. And the Bible says, check this, the Bible says that those who were not inside the ark are those who were taken. They were taken in the flood. And when the flood was over and the ark settled and the door opened and Noah and his family were the ones who were left behind still on the earth. See, we might have got our terminology turned around because we got popular movies talking about left behind, but we got to check what the text actually says. Those who were taken are those who were taken in the flood. They're the ones who perished. Those who went on to live on the earth, those are the ones who were left behind. I want to be left behind. That means I've got eternal life in Jesus. I'm still alive. But the point is, one day the ark of safety, one day the ark of salvation is going to say all aboard. Those who have the oil to make it through this night, we're going in and the door will be shut. And I hope that you're not on the outside when the bridegroom shuts the door. Because the Bible tells us he opens doors and no man can close them. And he closes doors and no man can open them. And then you can bang on that door all day. Let me in, Jesus. Lord, I prayed in your name. Let me in, Jesus. I preached in your name. Lord, let me in. I heal people in your name. And he'll just yell back from the other side, man, get out of here. I don't even know you. You got to have a relationship now. Check your oil. Do you have the presence of God in your life? Is God moving inside of you? Are you following his will? See, there's a lot of people who believe in Jesus and going to hell believing in him. Because even though they call him Lord, they don't make him Lord. Lord means master. You can't call him master and not do what he says. Why do you call me Lord and don't do what I say? Not him who says, Lord, Lord, shall make it into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does my father's will. Yes. He who does the will of my father who is in heaven is he who makes it in. Obedience to the word of God. There will be no liars in the kingdom. There will be no thieves in the kingdom. There will be no deceivers in the kingdom. There will be no drug makers, drug sellers, or drug users in the kingdom. There will be no homosexuals, lesbian, transgender, whatever you want to call it. None of that is coming in. The door will be shut and you will be on the outside. 
And that's not hate speech, that's love speech. I'm telling you because I love you. I'm telling you because I want you to make it in. We don't have to like it and we don't have to agree with it. You just have to do it. He's the king. And if you don't obey the king, it's off with your head. He's not going to compromise with you. Check your oil. Check your oil. Are you ready for when the bridegroom comes? I believe the angels are getting lined up in heaven now with their trumpets. Oh, I believe they've got the white horse ready for his master to sit on him and come triumphantly to call his saints. I believe that the saints on earth need to be busy bringing in the harvest, bringing in the souls, so that we there can be more of us to meet him when he comes. Amen, somebody. I believe that we can't afford to have the master show up and find us with our work undone. I believe that we've got cousins and nephews and nieces and brothers and sisters and friends and co-workers who are unsafe, who need to hear about Jesus, and I believe it is your job to tell them. Don't let Jesus show up and ask you, why didn't you tell your own mama about me? Why didn't you tell your boss about me? Why didn't you tell your next door neighbor? You talk to him over the fence every day, but you never asked him if he has Jesus. Why didn't you? Don't let it be said that you didn't do your job. Don't let them show up and have to ask you why you treated that sister wrong. Why did you sleep with that man's wife? Why did you steal from your job? Check your oil. Have you been walking faithfully with the Lord? Check your oil. Have you been living righteously from a heart of holiness? Check your oil. Have you been loving God above all else and loving your neighbor as you love yourself? Check your oil. Are you ready? Right now, this day, for the return of the Lord, check your oil. Check your oil. Check your oil. Examine yourself. Now is the time when you have opportunity. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow because the bridegroom might come in the middle of this night. Check your oil. Make sure you're ready to meet him when he comes. Life is short. What do we get? 70 years by way of strength? 80? That is short in comparison to eternity. I'm only almost halfway up that scale. When I look back, it looks like it flew by. And I've seen from my own experience, every year goes by faster than the one before. But now, some people I came through school with didn't make it to see 19. They didn't know that they didn't have a chance to get saved when they get 50. Everybody, oh, I, I want to be right with, I want to go to heaven, but you know, I got some things to do. I want to have some fun and party. I'm going to get saved when I'm old. You don't know if you're going to make it to be old. Nowadays, partying is the leading cause of death. Go to the bar and never make it back home. You better get it right while you can. There's no high that's better than the high you can have from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's no inebriation like being inebriated with the presence of God, having his spirit move all through you, amen. amen. See, we still partying, but we party clean over here. And when we get done partying, we know where our vehicles are. Amen, amen somebody. And I can get in my vehicle and drive home, and the police can drive all the way home behind me, and I ain't got nothing to sweat about. Because I ain't got nothing in here but a Bible. Pull me over if you want to. It's better on this side. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be here. Amen. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if I got saved and I found out that this was worse than what I was, I came over here because I didn't like life as it was. If I came over here and this was worse, I probably would have went back. But you know what I found out? For all the trouble I have to go through, this is far better. Amen. This is far better. I'm happy, y'all. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm strong and I know where I'm headed, and I have no fear of death. I hope I don't die painfully, but I don't mind dying, because I know where I'm going. 
Do you know where you're going? You better check your oil. 